I keep track of a lot of cruise trends and today we have got a really big announcement about one of the major cruise trends that we're seeing here in 2024 and moving beyond. It's been around for a long time. We're also going to talk about the Celebrity Ascent. She's in a whole new world for her summer season. We've got updates from Norwegian's Pride of America and lots more. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, it's Saturday, it is April of 2024, and let's start at the very top. Like I said, I think a lot about what the different trends are that are going on in cruising and what the future looks like. And one of the things that I feel like is really come to the forefront a lot, it has always been around for the longest time, but it seems like casino offers, people gambling on cruise ships, that trend is still continuing to grow, and it looks like it's not going to stop <laughs> growing for the foreseeable future. So the really big deal, though, that I want to talk to you about today is an amazing partnership that was just announced with Hard Rock Cafe, Seminole Gaming, and that, um, so the Seminole, uh, if you are familiar with Florida State University, it's Florida, uh, the Seminoles are their mascot. Our daughter went, to, did her graduate work there and thoroughly loved it. But uh, anyway, so Seminole Gaming and then uh, Celebrity Cruise Line and Royal Caribbean Cruise Line have announced a partnership and this is really huge. So what they're looking to do is extend that um, reach and their partnership so that people that like to um, do the gaming on shore will have a lot of perks associated with that and then be able to access a lot of perks when they sail on Celebrity Cruises or Royal Caribbean. And the same with a lot of people who have sailed a lot on Royal Caribbean, on Celebrity, they are going to be able to access a lot of perks at, at the shoreside gaming. So let me tell you um, what they are looking at for this. So first of all, this is what they are calling a global partnership. They they are including the like for example the Hard Rock Cafe locations around the world and as you know um, Royal Caribbean and Celebrity they sail to destinations around the world and so why is this a big deal? Um, it says whether extending their cruise vacation at one of our port adjacent properties, visiting one of the participating Hard Rock hotels or cafe locations worldwide, or enjoying cruise line um, ship sailings around the world, travelers now have a new way to experience the very best of Hard Rock Cafe, Seminole Gaming, Royal Caribbean, and Celebrity. So what do you get? If you um, are a part of Unity by Hard Rock Cafe, those loyalty members are going to get discounts on Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises and also um, qualify for um, actually be invited to go on a cruise. Um, they also say that their top tier loyalty members will receive an annual complimentary cruise on select ships and itineraries. So everyone that um, likes to do the gaming there in those in uh, the shoreside locations, are, the whole world is going to open up for them with cruising. And then the Club Royale, um, which is uh, Royal Caribbean, and the Blue Chips Club members um, are going to be able to access discounts at the Hard Rock Cafes and perks when they're visiting those Hard Rock, hard rock locations or the Seminole Gaming locations and sometimes they are going to qualify for annual complimentary trips to Hard Rock Cafe locations. And so it's really amazing how they're meshing these two together. Now, because of this, they're having really um, special celebrations starting yesterday on Friday and today. Um, they are having some big celebrations there in uh, Florida to celebrate this partnership. And the really cool thing is it is going to extend on the sailing of Icon of the Seas that is leaving today. And um, so for that whole sailing, um, they've got some celebrations that are going to be underway. So um, let's see. Um, first of all, let me tell you the itinerary that Icon of the Seas sailing is going to go to Costa Maya, Cozumel, and Rotan, Honduras, a very typical Western Caribbean itinerary there. But a special highlight is going to be at Base Camp, which is a 
kind of a laid back spot, it says for snacks when you're on the Icon of the Seas. Um, they are going to serve the Hard Rock Cafe's legendary Messy Burger, which is named for Lionel Messi. He um, works with Hard Rock Cafe. Um, he is one of their um, spokespersons. And as you might recall, when they were doing the naming of the Icon of the Seas, Lionel Messi was part of that as well as um, the whole team there. And so he has a lot of ties there to both locations. Locations. And so his very fancy messy burger, they call it, that Hard Rock Cafe serves, is going to be served for free during this whole sailing. They are also going to be having some giveaways. You get some sunglasses, uh, mini soccer balls, all of these things, all to celebrate this special partnership. So I thought it would be kind of fun in the comments if you will let me know if you um, use the casino and if this is an exciting um, announcement for you if it will impact where you decide to do your onshore gaming as well as uh, is this going to make you want to go more on Royal Caribbean and celebrity because they are merging all of those benefits I would really like to hear from those of you that have a lot of experience with this I don't have any experience with this and so let let me know I know that we've got a lot of you out there that would have um, a very educated opinion on this so let me know what you think and we'll go from there. I also wanted to just give you a quick reminder that if you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, come and join us. We'd really love to see you there. But we also have a Let's Go family member who did a couple of very useful posts all about using the casino on cruise ships. A lot of really good information is along with a lot of good experience. And so make sure that you take a look at that. They're pinned to the top. So if you haven't seen them yet, if you're with us, um, go take a look at those as well as if you're brand new, they're really easy to find that way. There has also been a lot of talk in the news this week about the new rules for airlines to refund passengers when um, different requirements are met uh, and their flights do not go as anticipated. Now, before these new rules came out, airlines could make up their own rules. And so airlines had a lot of different rules between different airlines. And so just because one airline did one thing one way, another airline might do it differently. And so these rules are supposed to be making it a little bit more uniform. They are not in effect today. They don't come into effect until future dates. But here are the take home things that I want you to be aware of. There are different requirements that have to be met in order for an airline to have to refund you for your money within a set amount of time. So first of all, um, if you have purchased a plane ticket and you are due for a refund, they have to um, refund you promptly. They have to put it back on the card that you paid for with it or give you cash if you paid with cash. They have to be done within seven business days. And um, so I think it's great that they now have a prompt pay requirement for refunding people. Uh, along with this is the really important information of what has to happen in order for you to qualify for that refund because sometimes airlines will We'll say no, um, you don't qualify for that refund. So there are really set um, reasons now. Um, so first of all, if your flight is delayed a lot, so if you are more than three hours late on a domestic flight or delayed six hours internationally, if you end up arriving in a different airport that you were supposed to go through, if they add more stops on the flights that you are on, um, and then if you um, are, if the plane that you're going to be flying on is changed to another kind of aircraft that does not accommodate any accessibility um, requirements that you might have, you are also due to be able to have a, re a refund for your ticket since you won't be able to take that flight. Another um, important thing I think is the significantly delayed baggage return. So if they do not, if you know how you, when you get <laughs> to the airport after your flight, you go down there and you wait at baggage claim for your luggage to come. If your checked bags do not arrive with, to you within 12 hours on a domestic flight or 15 to 30 hours on an international flight, they have to refund you your checked bag fees. Okay. Um, also, if you have paid for any other services, like if you pay for Wi-Fi and it doesn't work or any other thing like that, then they're required to refund that money to you as well. Um, 
So let me know, how often have you been impacted by flights being changed significantly like that? Either you're three, you know, three hours late on a domestic flight, six hours late on an international flight. I feel like often those things can happen without much trouble, but I'm always happy to get on a flight and get where I'm going, even if it is delayed a little bit. But I know that sometimes it makes it so that you can't go or that you end up having to look to another airline and try to get another flight. So I would think those would be the situations when these um, rules would come in really handy. But I look forward to hearing what you think about all this. And it is really important because so many of us travel, we have to fly in order to be able to go on a cruise. And so that's why I think it's really important that you stay up to date on all of these things. Let's talk about the Pride of America. Pride of America is the only ship that sails around the Hawaiian Islands. If you want to do a cruise of the Hawaiian Islands, you just want to fly into Honolulu. You don't want to do the cruise you know, from San Francisco or Vancouver or San Diego or Los Angeles or anywhere else, quite frankly, and use all of those sea days, you can fly into Honolulu, get on the Pride of America and do a seven day cruise. Now, it, we have a really interesting perspective here from uh, one of our Let's Go family members because she went on the ship 18 years ago, she said, when it was um, brand new and uh, then they just barely went again and so some of the things that stood out to her are things that i i hear often from people but uh, the pride of america is an american flagged ship you have to be an american flagged ship to say just sailing around a united states location there and so it's there are not a lot of companies clearly that want to do that so ncl's pride of america i would say is in a class of her own there uh, people are willing to pay a premium to be able to do that as well as um probably you know put up with a little bit more so the things that stood out to this let's go family member was um and you know it's the things that we've been hearing a lot from Nor uh, norwegian for a while now that um, you just get one time a day um, room service and that's what we've been used to on norwegian for quite some time now she said that the crew members are worked very hard that they seem like they never quite catch up and they're really busy they don't um, seem to have much time to say um, hi or anything like um, you know so often on a when you're on a cruise, you like to say hi to your room steward or you like to visit with your waiter at dinner for just a minute. And she said that there really isn't any time for that. She said that the food in the buffet is better than it was in both of the main dining rooms that they tried. She said the specialty dining they tried was better than the main dining rooms and better than the buffet. So that's a trend that we seem to see a lot on a lot of cruise lines as well. Um, one thing she pointed out, she said that as they, um, when they were on board that ship, that the gratuity um, was turned into a surcharge. She saw that on her paperwork and she said in the fine print there it says that the money goes to an incentive plan and is distributed and so she said what they did is what so many of us do you end up tipping in cash and then go ahead and let the gratuities you know be charged to your room every day or you prepay them whatever you want to do but um, it sounds like um, things are going there on the pride of America um, great from the standpoint they had a fabulous cruise they were so happy to get to go see all of the islands one thing she did point out is excursion prices she said it was was much more expensive to book an excursion with the ship than it was to book it through Viator or some other private tour provider. And let me tell you, I'm noticing that a lot. And this is a good time to say that this morning I noticed that the Alaska excursions are 20% off, okay? They just pop those up on the website every now and again, and they don't really tell you they're coming, and you don't know unless you happen to go look at excursions. So if you need an Alaska excursion, today's a good day. Um, if they haven't... Um, I don't know how many hours they were letting it run, but um, it seems to me truly that excursions are up across the board. I've noticed a lot that the, the like for example, the excursions that we have paid for for Alaska when we go at the end of June on Princess, uh, sorry, the end of July, uh, are a lot more expensive even now than when we booked them when we first booked the cruise. Uh, the same with um, going to the British Isles. Everything is going up an awful lot. And so kind of look around, see what fits your budget and decide how you're going to go see the places that you want to see. One thing is really important for you to remember though, if you can possibly do it, when you are somewhere 
and there is something that you really want to see, do not do it because you're ticked with how much it costs. I know because sometimes I look at things and I'm like, I don't know, that's an awful lot for that. And sometimes I'll say, well, I don't need to do it then. But sometimes if it's something that I really want to do, I'll just have to pay it. And so kind of keep that perspective in mind that you never know when you're going to pass that way again. And it doesn't mean that I mean throw your budget out the window, but it means just keep perspective when you decide what to do with everything. Okay, don't forget that. I always have to remind myself to keep perspective. Now, I think it's really special that the Celebrity Ascent is sailing in the Mediterranean this summer. So she just barely um, yesterday arrived in Barcelona, and she is going to be running um, 7 to 12 night cruises um, in that whole eastern and western Mediterranean area there. And I am really excited. And so when you think of the Ascent, I'm excited because I get to go on her in November. But... Um, in the Caribbean, but the things that really stand out to me about the Ascent, even though I have not been on her yet, are the things that stood out to me about the Beyond. Absolutely spectacular, beautiful ship. It's You just walk up and you're like, wow, just wow, which by the way is how I felt about the Sun Princess. You know, and I think I felt that way about the Discovery Princess as well, but I just got on her, except for she's a lot smaller. Um, you don't realize how small the Royal Class ships on Princess are until you see these other ships. But anyway, um, some of the things that really stood out to me about the Beyond are how beautiful of a ship that is. Everything from the pool deck um, to how beautifully that is appointed to um, the, you know, the interior of the Grand Plaza area that they've got. Uh, just the whole thing. They had excellent entertainment when we were on board and um, the food was delicious. And the things that, um, you know, I mentioned yesterday when I was talking to you about the, prince, the brand new Princess Sanctuary collection about um, the dining and I love how Princess has really done so much with the experiential dining and I think that Celebrity has done a really good job with the dining that you can experience on the ship it's not like the experiential thing like the Spellbound or um, like the um, even well I don't know where you put the chef's table with all of that but um, it's out, I'm excited to hear about Love by Brito when that's um, up and going but I think that honestly Celebrity has really done such a good job they've got that um, aqua class on board and only the aqua class people can dine in blue you can't even pay to dine in blue you can't pay any amount of money to dine in blue unless you're in that aqua class They've also got um, Le Voyage, um, which is Danielle Blude's a very special restaurant on board. They've got the Le Petit Chef, um, lots of other dining places. Um, that Eden is a whole different. If you have not seen that, like look for, a vi I'm sure I've got a video that shows some footage from Eden. Um, and it is just remarkable the things that they have done. So I am really excited. So if you happen to be booked on Celebrity in Europe this summer, put it in the comments. Tell us where you're going and what you're most excited to experience on those ships because uh, I need to do that sometime. My sister went and her husband went on the edge last year and um, in Europe on, in the western uh, Mediterranean and they thoroughly enjoyed it. So um, it's just really fun to try new things and see new places. wanted to bring you up to date on that. That's all I've got for you today. We're going to not cover quite as much today. We'll see you here bright and early again on Monday morning or Monday afternoon. I really appreciate you being here with me. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. We need to have you with us. And if you appreciate my updates, will you please give this video a thumbs up? We really appreciate you. So thank you. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.